Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic, Kriti Gupta, counting you down to the closing bell. Here to help take us beyond the bell. It's a global simulcast. We're joined right now by Carol Masser and Jess Minton. Welcome to our audiences across Bloomberg Television, Radio, Bloomberg Originals, and those folks streaming on YouTube. Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, all higher here on the day. Yeah. Tech, discretionary communication services, that's what you want to see. Those are the leaders on the day. But, Carol, I think this is interesting. What? Leaders on the week, and I won't give you a pop quiz because you always fail them. Still remain <laughs> cyclicals. First Solar is your number one gainer in the S&P oh, 500 wow. Someone did their homework. I did my little search, I'm just going to say. But it's interesting, the names you just ticked off in terms of the gainers, right? You always hear, high rate environment, not good for some of these names, and yet they are certainly just outperforming again. Definitely. And if you're looking at just what's happening with the biggest decliners of the week, actually Dish Network is the one, especially after coming off the back of that multi-day outage earlier this week, and also a downgrade from Bank of America clearly hitting that stock this week. You know, it's interesting. At the end of the day, when it comes down to leadership, you're still hearing the commentary really be values going to lead. The era of growth is over. And yet here we are. I'm not sure, Romaine, if we can call it a defensive trade. What do you use every day? A cell phone, Google, sure, but we Amazon, use oil too. these growth yeah. names. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, what? I mean, good point. I mean, I know. don't know. Yeah, who knows? I mean, we're obviously at a clear inflection point, both in the markets and the economy. We should point out uh, that we did see uh, continued strength uh, coming out of Asia, and those shares over mm -hmm. there, uh, Europe uh, managed to at least sort of uh, stay above the waterline as well. It was a mixed picture in the commodity space. The VIX did get tamped down, and now you're looking at equities, which, of course, had a three-day stretch where it looked like, well, we were headed for a down week, a retest of the 200-day moving average on the S&P and the NASDAQ, a retest, at least for right now, that it passed. The Dow Jones Industrial Average higher on the day by about 390 points, up about a percent here on the day, and that's going to be good enough for a weekly gain of at least about 1.7 percent. The S&P higher by about 1.6 percent here on the day and 2 percent on the week. The Nasdaq compiler composite higher by about 2% here on the day, and we'll call it roughly about 3% uh, on a weekly basis here. Let's take a quick look at the Russell 2000. We've been talking about these cyclical names and how they've been out front. The uh, Russell 2000 is going to finish the day higher by about 1.3% here on the day and about 2%, Carol Masser, on the week. Yeah, and most names in the S&P 500, 443 to be an exact. I, I know we're going to get into the industry groups, but take a look at banks, man. They're up almost 2% in today's session. I'm thinking about Jamie Dimon on Monday, that exclusive of seeing what he has to say about the outlook. It's going to be a big one. Yeah, specifically if you're talking about yields higher, which is interesting, Carol, you mentioned that they were one of the gainers. Let's talk about the decliners here because, look, it really isn't uh, that much to pick from where you do see that food retail sector really at the lows here. The rest all green on the screen. We already talked about the tech outperformance. Let's talk about what's not performing well. It's mostly a company like Costco, which even though you have a massive profit beat, a massive sales beat, it's the fact that they're crediting criti criticism for not capitalizing on the fact that the consumer is still strong, businesses are still strong, take advantage advantage that membership hike uh, interesting is the only thing driving this market lower I guess the only thing I would point out is we got some key data points before the Fed makes its next decision that could change the tone having said that a lot of names to choose uh, among when it comes to the gainers in today's session um, we've talked about I this a lot chose wisely. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't, according to you. Uh, Broadcom, uh, up almost 6% in today's session. Top in the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100. Uh, reported results, we broke them down last night. Beat expectations gave a revenue outlook ahead of the analyst uh, consensus. Wall Street firms positive on the report. Also, they talked about AI, and that certainly gave a kick to the name. Speaking of AI, and there's a little bit of a theme in my three gainers today. C3 AI. 33% higher in today's session. It forecasts revenue for the fourth quarter that topped estimates. Analysts coming out, uh, noting an upbeat tone from the company's CEO, who saw a dramatic change in business sentiment compared with mid-2022. And one more, Meta. And, you know, Romaine, you've talked about this one a lot because yeah. it has been on a tear. It's up more than 50% so far here in 2023, another 6% gained in today's session. It has more than doubled since that November 3, uh, yeah. 2022 low. Mark Zuckerberg spending a lot of time in Instagram. He put out a post. He said that Meta will be lowering the price of two of its virtual reality headsets so more people can get into the space. So now you, me, Jess, and Preeti can buy them. <laughs> 
checking back in with the decliner, decliners today, especially the ones I had mentioned earlier, looking again at Costco, where it closed down more than 2%. So that does come off the back, as I mentioned earlier, about the slowest monthly sales gain since early COVID. But again, the CFO did say that big ticket discretionary items have been a bit weak. And then also, if you're looking at where Zscaler closed, that stock down more than 11% today. And that did come after, especially this is a software company, it did drop again it was warning about this macro uncertainty even though some of the earnings did come in better than expected and then lastly looking at what's happening again with bumble unfortunately that stock down 8.8 percent at the close now it did announce as far as what's happening with a secondary offering that was over 13.7 million shares of its common stock about yeah. 22 dollars per share but still seeing that stock down quite a bit today remain all right uh, that's the look here at some of the individual names you go back to the treasury market which was really was the tail uh, wagging the dog here. The bond sell-off did abate a bit here on this Friday afternoon. Yields a slightly lower across the board, but only by about a basis point or two on the short end here. But you look at it back on a weekly basis, six, six straight weeks higher on the shorter end of the curve for both the two and the 10-year. Uh, four straight weeks, I think, uh, when you're looking at even shorter uh, on the six months bills here. And this gets to the broader question here about whether you are paying attention to the macro and the micro. One of you was just talking about the resiliency in consumer spending, the resiliency in business spending. Two stories on the Bloomberg terminal that have really caught my eye was one, the idea that a lot of people looked at retail earnings. They were happy with what they saw in the rearview mirror, but they still have a lot of concerns about what's going forward. And then, of course, we talk about flows this week, guys. A lot of the flows weren't into equities. They were still going in to things like ETFs that track, well, inflation hedging instruments. Well, all I'm going to say is just look at ahead, you know, ahead to next week. Well, we've got a jobs report. You've got Jay Powell up on uh, Capitol Hill. You've got news out of China as they are rejiggering certainly their economic teams, their mm -hmm. uh, rate decisions in several different countries. There's a lot of things out there that can certainly put some nervousness back into the markets. And you have the release of Creed. Yeah. <laughs> I left that for you. Yeah, market moving. <laughs> well, there's a lot going on, uh, no doubt about it. But for me, yeah. Carol, we've talked about the technical levels a lot for the bond market. I am still in awe. We crossed 4% this week. Mm -hmm. How high do we go next week? But we didn't end there, right? Uh, all along the curve, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's significant, too, that we kind of did pull in a little bit. And, and I do want to point out, too, I mean, we talk about, uh, and I think uh, Emily Grafeo on uh, Bloomberg Television touched on this a while ago, the idea of being in still a relatively range-bound market. So it's, it's, a, it's good to sort of get excited about these percent moves here. But when you look at 4,000 and change of where we are in the S&P, similar story with some of the other asset classes out there here, we really haven't gone much further than where we've been, really, over the last couple of months. Something, Romaine, I wanted to point out is just given where the S&P 500 closed today, if you look at the technicals, that uptrend line from October back in place after it had broken below that earlier this week. So that, from a technical perspective, is a bullish sign in the near term as we are going into these big catalysts. Even beyond next week, on the 14th, we will get that CPI data. And obviously, on March 22nd is the big Fed decision. Yeah, it's, I think, also a big, big lead up to the jobs data that we then get on that following mm -hmm. Friday. And I think that's going to be the game changer for a lot of these equity markets specifically yeah. when the bond market's kind of marching to their own drum. And you know what else I'm also interested in? I mean, there's a lot of these industry conferences next week. I think, Carol, you might have mentioned uh, or someone mentioned uh, Jamie Dimon uh, mm -hmm. speaking. But yeah. you have Sarah Week. Uh, you have a big health care conference over at Cowan. Normally, these are just kind of like, ah, blah, blah, blah. But I think given economic conditions here and just sort of the need to hear from some of these executives about how they're positioning right now in this environment, I think could be could actually be uh, more of a catalyst and maybe some of the economic data. And to be fair, I think about some of the tech companies that, you know, reported. I mean, we are seeing IT spending. It is happening. So it's not like you're seeing a complete retrenchment uh, in the corporate community. Maybe it's smarter buying, but they're not pulling in completely. Although, I don't know. It just, to me, seems to be a little bit of a positive. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And back to Crudy's <laughs> point, especially with that jobs report next Friday, if you look at the Ford implied volatility, this is some data from Citigroup, it looks as if investors are almost under position for volatility on that day. Obviously, if you think of CPI and the Fed decision, upward momentum there on the vol side, but it almost seems as if we could still see a bit of gyrations, especially when that report comes out in about a week. 
What do you think? Uh, I mean, let's. I, I do. I'm curious about uh, what Jamie Dimon has to say because we know he's I been pretty too. candid uh, about economic conditions and how he views things. Uh, do you think his tone will be much different than what we heard uh, off of that conference call when they reported earnings a few weeks ago? I don't know. I mean, I, he's not always. I feel like he's going to say how he feels. Like I think he's someone who's very real yeah. um, when it comes to the environment, and I feel like Ed's going to ask him, you know, all the tough questions, if you will. So I think I, it was all those years he spent uh, honing his skills in Chicago. Obviously. <laughs> no, but I mean, they've got a little while before earnings come out. Um, I just think he'll be, I don't know. We'll see if the Jamie Dimon, the weather forecaster, you have sunny plans skies. This weekend, what? You have plans this weekend? Um, I have some chores to do. What chores. about you? <laughs> you going to go see Creed or is it next week? It opens this weekend. Oh. You haven't seen it. If you just go outside Bloomberg World Headquarters, you'll see all the ads. You can't miss them. Okay. It's basically Michael B. Jordan in his underwear. <laughs> all right, then I'll put it on my to-do list. You. you sold me. You made the sale. All right, guys, have a great weekend. We will see you again same time, same place tomorrow. Our cross-platform coverage, not tomorrow, on Monday. Our cross-platform coverage, radio, TV, YouTube, and, of course, Bloomberg Originals, Beyond the Bell. Catch us on Monday.